Hello and welcome to the Grey Cricketer on 7. A huge show, surprisingly, because not really much cricket's been played except for one third of the Big Bash. So, so many things to talk about, lads. There's the one day is going on. The Sri Lankan Test Squad got announced. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Big Bash, WBBL, mm-hmm. a lot of footage. We're going to show you to, uh, to dissect the alpha power plays so far happening in the Big Bash in the last week or so. And then we're going to do uh, a little thing called the TJC Fashion Police. Who's hot? Who's not? All before we answer your questions using the hashtag AskTJC. My name's Ian Higgins. I'm joined by Sam Perry and Dave Edwards. Boys, uh, boys, happy new year and, uh, and and welcome to another episode of the Great Cricket On I've only seen you 26 times since January 1st, but yeah. always nice to be welcomed. Mm. It's, the be- it's the best two weeks of the sporting calendar, he goes. I've always said that. Australian Open's on. Let's not promote that on the rival network. No. But, you know, the BBL's on. Yeah. WBBL's on. Mm. There's a bit of sleepy one-day cricket taking place. Again, mm. don't promote that on the rival network. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, some test cricket coming up. Yeah, test cricket coming up, Pez. That's right. Uh, the, the, t- the squad for the Sri Lanka test series has been announced. Uh, the big ins and outs. The Big takeaways mm. so far, obviously, Burns and Renshaw were crying out for them, but then also Absolutely. young Will Pekovsky Eddowes mm. is, uh, is in the team. You must be excited about oh, Will. He goes, so glad you asked me about this. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. I think the nation's excited, and we've been waiting for it. We called for it last week. We called mm. for the, put the 17 out. year old Wunderkind mm. uh, to solve all our hopes and dreams for Australian mm. cricket. I think he's 20. Mm. Yeah. We weren't far off, though, and mm. uh, the Australian selectors have mercifully delivered, and they've delivered not just him, but a few other changes as mm. well. Yeah. I don't know how happy we are with all of them, but let's just see how it pans out. Yeah, I mean, we, did, we were crying out for a 17 year old, but instead we got a 20 year old, three years of life experience, you know, half an arts degree mm. uh, yeah, under yeah. his belt, probably. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, Pez, let's talk about the big outs of the uh, Sri Lanka Test Series. Yep. The Hans comes out, Finch already was gone as well, but then obviously the two marshes. Yes. Mm. It was, who saw this coming? Well, like, it really feels like the selectors have listened to the public yeah. square. You know, like, we've all been standing there, thousands of us baying for marsh blood. Yeah. We finally got it, like a Barabbas Jesus situation. Mm. You know what I mean? We mm. wanted Barabbas. Yep. Yes. Barabbas is obviously Joe exactly. Burns. No. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, religious reference there. But, um, mm. yeah, like, uh, look, I think probably time for Sean Marsh to be put out to pasture mm. there a little bit. Mm. Uh, Mitch Marsh, I think, especially. Uh, and but they're always welcome back. Yeah. They'll yeah, always well, be welcomed yes. back with open arms. The mm. door's never closed on those boys. Mm. Well, it's like a private school. Once you've been there, it's just, yeah. it's just a you know, journey for life. Investment oh, properties, I don't know how yeah. that works. I know 16 QCs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the test series coming up, Brisbane yes. and Canberra. Yeah. Bit of a hit out before the Ashes. Mm. Can, we, can we take away anything? Because if we win, then it's just like, yeah, mm. but it was Sri Lanka. Take everything yeah. out take of it. Everything. Like, like, we're at this take point, aren't we? I mean, so like at the start of the India series, we're like, oh, should we bring David Warner back? Mm. Uh, you know, we're not sure if he fits in with the values of the side. A couple mm. of poor innings later and some very bad first innings from the Australian yes. side, so we're like, well, Warner's back. Yeah. We'll definitely be back. And I think like when we see this Sri Lanka series and hopefully there's some runs scored, we'll just be going, oh, great, Australian cricket's back. Mm. We'll take any win we can get. Like, yeah. I'm I'm absolutely starving for wins. I'm starving for hundreds. You are Even starving. if players are like holding the, ba- the back of the bat up, you yeah. know, I'll take that. I'll take any hundred at the moment I can get. Oh, absolutely, Pez. I mean, is it unfair on the guys that went through the hardship of that India series yes. to promptly be dropped? I mean, you've gone through mm. those uh, those four very trying tests against India, and then you suddenly drop, and then a bunch of new blokes come in. Yeah. Mm. Easy pickings against Sri Lanka. Don't oh, know anything yeah. about them, mm-hmm. um, but it's just going to be a run fest. Well, we need thing, to be gluttons about runs. Yeah, mm. you're right. That is one thing we do now is that test cricket's easy, runs are easy. Really, I, I, I agree with you. It's like the, you know, going through that sort of um, the Indian series against that bowling attack. What a wonderful bowling attack! But it's mm. a little bit. It feels a little bit like you know, sort of World War One stuff out of the trend. So just to use up the bullets, to, you know. So now we have like the runs afterwards, right? You know, just mm. after that front line. Is it the same as that? Come in and save mm. us. It's exactly the same as that. Mm. It's exactly okay. the same as that. Um, what was different though from the entire series is, and we'll talk about it, is the ODIs, Australia versus mm. India. That's yeah. kicked off. Yeah. There's actually a match happening as we speak. So what we're going to reflect on oh, is yeah. actually going to be moot because another match will have been run and won as yeah. we uh, speak. Mm. We did have a very interesting development in this Australian ODI series, and that was the creation or recreation of 1980s kit, which basically is like a you know had a wonderful way of basically erasing anything that we had um, previously thought when it came yeah. to the Australian cricket summer. Yeah. Because this is just what we want to see. This is just gold kit oh. in all of its glory. Mm. It reminds us of the 80s. It reminds us of growing up. Mm. Um, what do you guys make of it? Yeah, it, it, I like the retro version. I mean, these mm. these are some of the uh, the retro years. Yeah. There, Shane Warne there, just in the, I mean, Dean these, Jones beautifully cropped oh, out there. Some yeah. wonderful and just, Photoshop. You skills. look at 1995 when Australia was so good. We thought, well, who, the only team that can rival us is a second Australian mm. team. Mm. Yeah. So we described it to, to play against <laughs> Let's Australia, play ourselves, yeah. and we always played them in the final of a tri series somehow. Mm. Um, mm. So I, just the glory years of like that. It just harks back to memories of us just dominating. Mm. There was no branding across. 
you know, any sort of jerseys. It was just clean. It's just clean, like, and it was eye popping colours. Mm. And that that one day kit actually hurt my eyes to look at. It was mm. so bright and pure mm. Mm. and refreshing distraction. And a distraction is exactly what we need right now. It we need to be distracted by beautiful yeah, things. My favourite thing about the kit is that it said the name of the team that you're representing in case you forgot. Yeah, yeah. you just look down, you go, that's the team that I play for. Uh, and your name on yeah. the shirt in case you lose it. That's yeah, posted back <laughs> in Australia. Uh, do true. these one days mean anything in that, like, yeah, we won that first match, but India were having an, extend, having an extended centre wicket. It's a World Cup year. Yeah, Glenn yeah. Maxwell's batting seven. Is that a spot mm. too low for him? People are getting very, very upset mm. by this. Uh, yeah. is, is that Especially where he belongs? Especially people in Victoria yes, are getting where we are right very, now. very parochially mm. upset by it. Mm. I don't know about Maxwell. I mean, mm. there's a lot of talk about, and we're, we're going to go into this in a lot more detail. Yes, um, important detail. Uh, you know, in another clip that we mm. recorded earlier. Mm. I don't know. Uh, is he on the out? Is he being managed out? Yeah. I feel like it's kind of one of those situations where Cricket Australia, I don't want to directly say, mm. sorry, champion, but, um, you know, thanks for your service, but um, we don't want to terminate you directly, but mm -hmm. we'll just manage you. We'll make your life a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, next thing you know, your office is in the basement, mm. and you don't know why, and you're looking for another job on Seek.com. Maybe that's what Maxi needs to start doing, Seek.com. He's one of the best batsmen in the country, Eddowes, and, you know, it's just like we've been crying. He's on, he's on the test squad. He's been mm. picked, you know, behind, yeah. uh, you know, guys like Labra Shane again. Mm. Um, and it's just like, I don't know what he has to do, but then, like, well, yeah, he's got to score, he's got to score runs. He's got to mm. score runs, you know, give him a chance that's to the white ball. If he scores runs with a white ball, then maybe, mm. but also let's put him at seven. And, yeah. and get him yeah. five balls to score yeah. those runs. Like, uh -huh. he scored about the, the most runs he could have scored, yeah. and including one beautiful flick off his pads that was mm. just majestic and, yeah. and spoke volumes about him as a cricketer. Yeah. But I just don't know about Maxi. I mm. like the idea that the Australian players and the coaching staff are saying, like, what a luxury it is to have a player like Glenn Maxwell mm. down the order, you know, to come in for the last three overs. Yeah. It's like, so he's a good player. He's a great player. He's really good. Yeah but he's not going to get to go up the top of the order. It's nice a, I love that logic. Like, imagine being Glenn Maxwell hearing that, like, oh, mm. I'm so good that <laughs> it feels good to see that I might be coming in. Like, they never said that yeah. to Bradman. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, they yeah. just let him bat. They just uh, got him out there for as it's many balls as possible. Product. Yeah. Yeah. It's more desirable the less you have of it. Yeah. It's like it's diamonds. A, basically yeah. the diamond trade. Yeah, yeah. it's the same as... Uh, I, it just reminds me, like, do you reckon Maxwell's there? It's like the 35th over, and he's next in. He's like, oh, I hope they're back for another 10 overs here. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, fancy... Yeah. You know, like, when you're playing club cricket, and it's like there's a small run chase on, and you're mm. next in, you're kind of like, there's actually nothing in this for me. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. even score. I can't even score a good-looking 30. There's nothing in it for me. Please don't get out. And then you face three balls, and then you go home, and you cry in the car for an hour. Can I, can I raise something that we've not prepared at all? In the first match, he was scheduled to bat at seven. The camera kept panning to him in the dressing room, as you guys would have seen. And the number four batsman was in, I believe that was Sean Marsh, yes. was in. And um, Maxwell had no, like, wasn't padded up at all. Mm. In fact, he wasn't even in Australia kit. So he, there were three right. wickets needed to fall mm. for him to come in. Actually, two wickets needed to fall for him to come in. Mm. No pads on mm. at all. What do you guys think of that? Is it like, like it's, it's weird. Me. Yeah, yeah, goosebumps. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I yeah. used to, you know, pad up when there were six wickets. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me, just yeah. because I'm, I'm familiar with that, you know, hor horrific mm. Uh, mm. fall of wickets in mm. succession, and um, the, you know, the fear of being timed out consumes yeah. every dream I've ever had mm. since. And also, you played in the weak team, so you had no faith in those six batsmen ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely exactly. no faith. Yeah. No. But he obviously doesn't have timed out dreams. No, <laughs> it's scary. I was like, how much does he hate wearing an Australian kit? He was two yeah. batsmen away, and he's just mm. like, no, nah, I don't fancy wearing this. Exactly. No loyalty. Uh, World Cup squad is being announced on April 23. Yes. Uh, are we expecting anyone who's before so Jai Richardson? Obviously, he took four wickets, yeah. bowled amazingly well with the new ball at the SCG there. Is he going to make, make the squad? Absolutely. And, like, what is he missing? He is ticking. I mean, we're talking about what Glenn Maxwell needs to do. Like, Jai Richardson. Richardson ticks every box, yeah. 140 plus, a great salad, mm. really well presented in press conferences. Seems to be kind of like a considered person as well. Mm -hmm. He's from Western Australia. I mean, he really, <laughs> yeah. he's got yeah. the whole, he's got thing the whole package. Yeah. And I really enjoy his like skittish, nervous energy as well. Yeah. It's quite refreshing because mm. we're used to these, you know, very confident. Uh, alpha fast mm. bowlers yeah. that we've got, you know, in our test team. It's nice mm. to see a guy with a bit of anxiety. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, one guy who would be having anxiety about making that World Cup squad is Steve Smith, who's uh, who's injured mm. at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Uh, so he did an injury. He, he did he did an injury. He did <laughs> an injury. He did it. In it's Victorian. an action. Unfortunately, he was playing grade cricket, so that's another mark against the Premier Cricket system. Mm. Um, probably giving throwdowns to a lower grader. Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's how he injured tennis his elbow. elbow. And well, we can't talk about tennis on this. Network. We can't talk about the tennis. No, <laughs> tennis <laughs> references. Yeah. Doesn't feel right, does it, mm. listener? Mm. Viewer? No, it mm. doesn't. Um, so then he went over to the uh, the, the BPL, the, the Bangladesh Premier League, and he's mm. injured again. Yeah. Uh, now he's like three month recovery. No. I think it's great actually. Like he's he's now in this concocted race against mm. time to make yeah. the Australian World Cup squad. Mm. And now you know all of the like how many sleeps until Smith mm. returns is going to be how many sleeps until he is or isn't named in the yeah. squad. I think it's better because like. <laughs> 
Like he he could be available for like the fourth round of the World Cup, yeah. and we'll we'll still pick him. You know what I mean? I I take Steve Smith not playing cricket for five years mm. and having never had a net, and I'd still pick him <laughs> in the side. That's how much I need him right now. He's a safety net. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's a, It's just good to know that he's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, is he going to be there? Yeah, like, yeah he absolutely. So. He'll, he'll be there even if his arm doesn't work. Like, yeah. d- we just need to see him in yeah. the dressing room. Like, yeah. We just need to see his face, a headband, yeah. pat him up and don't bat him. Good I, for don't, the group. I don't care. Bright, happy face. Yeah. Yeah. Get him amongst the boys. Get he, around him. He's that good that he's good for the group, just to yeah. be around. Just a good he's, guy to he, be he around. He could be the team mascot, you know, in the 01 around Ashes. Him. Yeah. Get around yeah. him in a semi-circle chant. Boys, lads, lads, that's what we need. That's all we need. I just want him sitting there padded up. He doesn't even have to play. Just get yeah. a mannequin of him. Mm. Okay, Save well, money. So Steve Smith, first name of the team sheet without actually eating cricket ball for mm. what seems like an eternity. Um, all right, lads. Well, let's move on to the Big Bash. We should talk about that. We, we've neglected the Big mm. Bash, haven't we? Because we've had so much test cricket on and now yeah. there's no test cricket. Let's just talk about some Big Bash. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about some non-real cricket. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> the Big Bash is on. Uh, and it's on every night, and there's nine games a night. Mm. Um, so uh, we've we picked up a couple of big power plays, uh, mm. alpha power plays, because mm. that's what men do in cricket. Yeah. Um, has you want to leave? Yeah, look, I just think there's been like one of the great. There's a lot of great things about the big bash. It's good for kids, and like you know, um, oh, the mums get involved. It's cheap to go to the matches. They're all the things that we need to say Hip-hop about music. the big bash. But yeah. there's a lot of weird Fireworks. things that happen in the big bash as well. There's a lot of weird unit mm. sort of stuff, weird unit yeah. behaviour. A lot of clubbies kind of playing. I'm going to roll this footage. It goes for 40 seconds, so just bear with it. Jeez, a man cad warning. That is something you don't see very often. And then the fully. Well, he's outsmarted himself there, Michael Beer. Absolutely outsmarted himself. He put himself under pressure mm. by talking about that man cat and then bowled an absolute pie. He hasn't even left his crease. He's just about to start then, and he's actually allowed to start once the bowler's about to release the ball. Well, he's in. Look, he hasn't left. That's right. So he was fine. You're right. So for some context there, the Scorchers are involved in a middling partnership that was developing, mm. and there's been a lot of conjecture about man and the morality of them. Yep. And Michael Beard decided in his wisdom to um, warn Michael Klinger against leaving his crease too early, only for replays to confirm that he didn't indeed leave his crease too early at all. It was followed up subsequently by him being smashed for four through extra cover and then to rub salt into the wound, Ricky Ponting sledged him relentlessly and said every time Michael Beer talks, he gets hammered. Uh, so, <laughs> I just, uh, what's the moral of the story? Um, don't man cat unless you actually see people leaving mm. the crease early. You'd never actually see that like execution of like yeah. the, the, the the he's gone for the man in the mm. full confidence that mm. he's like leaving the crease early, yeah. and then it's just like oh no he's the most honest man in cricket that I've ever man cat. Like don't do it to, like Michael Klinger literally like just oh, the most mm. salt of the earth person yeah. in cricket as well. It just it, it was a, it was a poor look. Oh, it was. Oh, I just can't watch man cat replays because I was man cat in under twelve yeah, game. You can't watch yeah. it. Seventy odd, and mm. I've just never forgotten it. Again, yeah. another dream that consumes me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, I picked up a couple of other things uh, here, lads. We'll just roll the first one in just a moment's time, but it's actually. David Willey of the Scorchers picking up mm. uh, the wicket. I might have been of Seb Gotch, actually. And, uh, and then just watch what he does after he takes the wicket to his teammates. League only about three or four yards off the rope. It's up in the air, and with no power, it should be caught, but it is. Dunk gone for 62. There was that slow ball bouncer again. This time he got it high and wide outside the off stump, and with, as you said, Bray, with no pace on the ball. You're not going, going to get that over third. Yes, yeah, so that there was the I've just taken a wicket, now get out of my face celebration, <laughs> leaving his teammates with absolutely no idea what to do. Like, you take a wicket, and that's one of the most exciting things about being in a field, because often you're standing isolated on a cricket yeah, over, which yeah. is a, a vast expanse of grass. And so when you, <laughs> when you take a wicket, it's you're like, I get to see my friends again. Of course, not yeah. your real friends, yeah. because they're your cricket friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'd put, yeah, Ben Dunk there taking the wicket there. It's uh, also nice as a fast bowler just to you know feign embarrassment when you take mm. a wicket, when inside he's you know jumping for joy. He's elated that he's taking a wicket. Come on, mate. Yeah. I, I actually having the watch was, was watching the match at that time, and it came after some very poor fielding from the Scorchers. Mm. So it was David Willey going like, I'll get the wickets, but I'm not going to talk to any of you for the way you've right. been mm. fielding. So yeah. a, a massive mm. and great alpha power play. Mm. 
Last one here to wrap up the Big Bash chat, guys. Uh, so just to paint the picture of this situation, it was the Thunder game at Spotless Stadium there against the Heat. The Heat had put on uh, about 430 off their 20 overs, mm. and the Thunder were behind the run rate in the match. Rain started to fall, and Shane Watson had to finish the game because he couldn't hold the bat properly. So mm. what we're about to see is Shane Watson ends in the game after not being able to hold the bat. Very sure to get that wicket. Um, oh, dear. Well, that is absolutely gigantic. It's oh. under the roof. Well, I think Dre Russ pumped one up there when he was here. Mujib can't believe it. Shane Watson has just got the length he was after. It was short, and he's rocked onto the back foot and absolutely pumped it out of the stadium. Oh, that's out of here. If it's not wet, it's going to be wet now. Look at that. 110 metres. 110 metres. I mean, just wow. the sheer magnitude of that shot mm. to end a cricket game. So he then walked down the wicket, shaking his head, just mm. saying, oh, look at the wicket. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop this, this a bit too paced, yeah. this wicket. Didn't even get it. I've just seen 110 metre six literally out of the stadium, which probably landed on oh. someone's car out the back. And the um, bowler, did you see his big six reaction there? <laughs> that was just out of control. <laughs> mm. Unbelievable. Same as all of us as that went to air. Uh, a very important segment to follow up here. Lads, mm. so, you know, the Big Bash is throwing up a lot of stuff that's a bit weird. We've been talking about it. Um, it throws up a lot of social questions as well because cricket's not just about runs and wickets. We all, you know, we talk about that. We know about that. Yep. Um, there's a lot of convention that needs to be followed, and it's important convention as well. We've seen, and we will get to the sort of headline of this here, but a lot of people are pulling out some fashion convention in cricket that is worthy of debate and discussion. In fact, one person who's doing it was invited onto the show this week but uh, declined or at least said, I'm still thinking about it. Um, He's still thinking about yeah, it as yeah. we shoot. Mm. That's right. He's still welcome to come on this show. Mm. He remains nameless. Well, but Pez, uh, it's like when you play a bad shot and someone yells out, think about it. Mm. You know? yeah. Yeah, it's the same as that. And then yeah. you stop, hold yeah. the game up for two minutes and literally mm. think about it. Yeah, but think about <laughs> it. it doesn't Sorry, Pez, I derailed you. No, that's, a, that's okay. So we're calling this segment TGC's Fashion Police Hot or not. We're going to go through a few examples of fashion convention in cricket, some people who've tried to kind of uh, change the wheel or rework the wheel a little bit yep. and um, decide whether indeed what they've done is hot or not. And then we're going to divide it into these columns it's, here and I'm going to use mm. sticky tape, so apologies if it's a little yeah. clunky, but mm. this is live TV, yeah, it's live TV and we've got a really big budget. You ever mm. have the problem of having too much money? Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah. Alright, well the first one here lads, uh, we noticed this uh, from the first uh, photo uh, shown earlier of Australia's ODI you know, retro kit mm. and it's Adam Zampa's black shoes, and you can yeah. see there just circled, highlighted on the bottom. He's wearing some sort of Vans or maybe Globe concoction. Everyone mm. in the front row there, they're, uh, they're, they're ASICs trainers that mm. they're uh, uh, sponsored by the Australian Cricket. Not, not Adam though, also a little bit of fancy handwork there with, uh, with uh, you know, recently recalled Peter Siddle. Mm. Uh, but uh, lads, what do we think about Adam Zampa's black wheels? Hot or not? Not for me. I think hot. I like it. Edos, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's definitely a no. <laughs> Two against one, and that's how the system that's works. That's democracy Adam manifest. <laughs> <laughs> so not. That's Adam, Adam Zampa's black, black wheels. Shoes. Unfortunately not. Edos, you're next okay. up. 18 so, more to go. Yeah. <laughs> Staying in the footwear segment, yeah. um, national captain, our, our, our leader of our country. Uh, we're talking about Tim Payne's blue shoes here. Yeah. So the highest... Uh, well, position in Australian cricket. He's our captain and he's wearing yeah. some blue shoes in a promotional shot. Yeah. Um, you can see the Australian blazer. In the, it all looks very um, straight, and, mm. straight and narrow. Yeah. Um, but the blue shoes, a little incongruous. Yeah. Hot or not, lads? Not for me. Just the cleanliness of that photo shoot, you know, it's like he's got his Australian yeah. cricket team blaze in the background. Yeah. The pristineness yeah. of his white yeah. popped collar that was yeah. starched. Baggy green. A baggy green on, you know, and he's, he's gone along on blue trainers. Yeah, Sorry. not for me. Sorry, Tim, that's a huge no. That's a no. That's a no. I have to agree. So I guess the bottom line here is that, yeah, shoes that are outside the norm are not hot. Yeah, you have to wear the right kind of shoes at all times. Mm. Moving into the legwear section now, lads, and we will try mm. and get a wriggle on. Um, an obvious one that we've seen for a long time, oh, you know, we always hark back to, the Vicks playing shorts. Yeah. Mm. This is a mercantile mutual cut. Let's say the 92-93 season, maybe 93-94. Mm. Mm. Um, not sure who that is. Bowling, to be fair. Tony Dottomay is the could, only guy I know from that era. Could, could, <laughs> could well be. Hello, Tony, Tony, if you're watching or listening. Um, <laughs> It only happened for one year. It obviously got a lot of promotion. Um, what do we yeah. think, Vic's playing shorts, hot or not? I mean, it was hot, which is why they were doing it literally, Ooh, but yeah. I say not. I think it's hot, especially now. If this is done in modern day, I mean, you know, people are actually wearing shorts into the workplace these yeah. days. You mm. can see them, you know, GQ models and modelling, yeah. uh, tailored shorts. So yeah. I think, you know, 
it's 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 2018. We should we should modernise. I think hot. It is. I'm going to go with you on this one. It's yep. hot because I think that the convention of wearing all white clothing, like baker's whites, basically mm. in the field, standing mm. in the sun all day, is ridiculous. Mm. We should be able to, uh, you know, wear whatever we like on the field, shorts included. Hot. hot. Can I say to be fair, the guy in the picture there too is really hot. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. Didn't see that coming. Uh, all right, next one up here is. Um, <laughs> There he is. is uh, hey, Tony. <laughs> I like the zoom in photo mm. as well to mm. the left of screen. Um, mm. WG Grace's belt and buckle. Now, this yeah. is one that uh, we've debated for a long period of time, yeah. but obviously, WG Grace, uh, you know, the grandfather of all cricket. Yeah. Uh, Great stance. Yeah, there's a lot going on there yeah. in that photo in itself. But, lads, what do we Beautiful make of man. WG Grace's belt? And buckle. Hottest thing I've seen. It's the hottest thing in the whole um, ream of things we're about to show. That yep. for me, I'm a big thumbs up for that being hot. Belt and buckle Huge bring fan. up that. And, and where the belt was actually like midway up his torso, yeah. I'm actually all for that. And again, another emerging fashion trend is the high waist. The high waist belt. Oh. So, so yeah. head of his know, time. The doctor. Mm. The he doctor. can play cover drive and probably solve uh, you know some sort of you know, polio or something. So that's a yes from me. Three <laughs> yeses. You're going to Sydney. So that goes up here in the hot section. Yep. Mm. Um, that's hot. That's hot. Something that I'm. Not as sure about, mm. uh, and we saw it in the Big Bash the other mm. day. Mm. Uh, Anton Devsic's long line shirt. Yeah. Mm. Uh, long line, obviously, being an industry term for the long t shirts yeah. that, uh, yeah. that cool kids wear these days yeah. on the street. We've got a few other examples there just to show. Yeah, so this um, is something the kind of thing you can get from ASOS. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there then, we go. And then there's there uh, Anthony on the right there just on his mm. way down. You can get that in different yeah. colours. He's as just well popping down to Woolies. Yeah. Website. yeah, if you want to pop in there. Yeah, uh, in it's the ASOS. Uh, you so know, hot or not? Uh, I don't know if you can bat an untucked no, shirt. Looks very me. unclean. You've got to yeah. be conventional if you're batting, playing cricket. Yeah. I love There's how a we're fine all line between these conventions, but also vehemently uh, aggressive about our opinions. I also think that it's not hot. No. Mm. Three no's. Three no's. Three no's. Let's go. Let's move on. Three no's. Let's move on. Okay. Okay. Shirt wear now. Moving up shirt the wear. torso. Yeah. Um, I believe this is what we've got next in line. Is it just, yes, it's Chris Tremlett's look at extra that. small shirt. Um, and gosh, look at those buzz. They're actually bigger <sighs> now since he became a my, semi-professional bodybuilder. My yeah. goodness. I mean, on the one hand, doesn't it just look phenomenal yeah. looking mm. at that rig? But Sorry, similarly, how as a, mm. yeah, you, you've lost yeah, your train of thought. I have too, but also as an opening bowler for England, how does he literally rotate his shoulder with a shirt that tight? Like there's a, there's a flexion issue there as well. Well, that explains yeah. his 50 plus bowling average. Yeah, yeah. absolutely absurd for a bowler to grow the upper body that much because yeah. it's the worst thing you can possibly do. Mm. Uh, on top of bowling, which is also the worst yeah. thing you can possibly do for many things, mainly mental health. Mm. But just, mm. I, I mean, he was, he was one of the things, he was one of the first rig based selections that we yeah. saw in the last decade or so. Extra small shirt on a bowler, it's a huge yes from me. <laughs> and that does not surprise me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a no from me. Okay. I think it's a really? yes, but in this very specific circumstance, I don't think it's something that should be rolled out globally. But mm. in Chris Tremlett's situation, it works. Mm. So let's give it, let's give it a hot rating mm. and move along. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. This one is, uh, you know, Chris Gale's shades. We've seen this in numerous iterations. Mm. Brian Lara was the first person yeah. I saw at the Adelaide yeah. Oval. We couldn't actually find an image, so we thought next best, Chris Gale. Yeah. Um, I mean... You know, if you are Chris Gale, you can get away with a lot of things in yeah. terms of like just you know batting with you know uh, the the sunglasses on there in a one day international just because you know you, gotta, you, gotta, you have to protect the eyes. But, but, but because we do have a lot of you know viewers who might be playing some park cricket, might play a bit of grade cricket. Would you advise them to wear the sunniest the way Chris Gale has? I mean, how would it look on someone walking out to bat? Maybe the grill's a bit higher on there. Face. Um, one, and of the then worst some thing, one of the worst sunnies, things. Or maybe some servo sunnies or something. How does that look? Of, like the peripherals, like if a ball kind of came slightly outside my line or, or, or mm. aggressively swinging ball, mm. I'd just be scared I'd miss it. In so the same, just the same mold as Tremlett. Safety. Yeah, same mold as Tremlett. Like if, if it was, you know, if it was Chris Gale, you know, that's mm. okay. Anyone else knows. Okay, so not so globally yeah. rolled. I'm going to say it's no. a no. Okay. No, it's a uh, no to Chris Gale. I agree. Mm. Sorry, champ. Mm. Champion, okay, your champ Chris Gale. Yep. Um, we'll hear from his lawyers soon. Yes. Uh, so next one, and we're staying in eyewear. Um, this happened just the other day, actually, in a mm. test match. I'm yeah. um, talking about Hassan Ali. <laughs> He's a pace yeah. bowler, oh and there was a kind of a, a mosquito problem or something happening in the test series. Yeah. So he decided to wear Oakley sunglasses <laughs> while bowling seamers. Yep. Um, something that I haven't actually ever seen in any form of cricket before. Yeah. Hassan Ali's Oakley's in a test match bowling seam up. Yeah. Yeah, and, oh, and, not, and taking poles. And taking poles. Yeah. Celebrate, like literally bowling someone and then mm. celebrating in Oakley's or Servo Yeah. yeah. Um, massive, yes from me. I think it's so rare that it's a yes. Yeah. I think it'd be like so distracting to the guy for his long run with sunnies on. It's like, is this a long off spinner's run up? Like, what's yeah. going on? I mean, usually you can only bowl with sunnies on if you're a spinner. Mm. You're going 
Oakleys in a test match and you're wearing the Oakleys, a huge yes from me. That's yeah. all kinds of rare. The biggest yes I've ever given. I've got, got to say, like when Pakistan does it, I'm, I get behind it. Like when Pakistan goes full rare unit yeah. on cricket fashion, yeah. I, I find it very difficult to not support it. Yep. Um, full respect to our friends in Pakistan. Okay, we're going to move on to headwear now. Um, I'm calling this one Ben Dunk's camping hat. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the floppy and then the string underneath, which right. is quite like it's quite the go in festivals at yes. the moment with a festival shirt. But he's got yes. the string underneath, like he's um, kind of just put the billy yeah. on, you know, yeah. under the shade. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I have just seen a red belly back snake, but mm. look, an eastern tiger. There. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Pez. You see a lot of that happening at festivals. No one's sober at those events, but Ben, yeah. I presume, playing in a Stars game was sober. At so, least I mean, five. It looked very much like your dad. You know, down there, just like in his, in his deck chair, yeah. just, just watching Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures, number yes. seven program, I think. Yeah. Sorry, Ben, it didn't look it didn't look good at all. Yeah, no. for you, I like it. Yeah, I like it too. So yes. Well, <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Well, did not but, see um, that coming. So do I get to put this up for the same reasons? I think because he looks like Dad and plays big bash cricket. Mm. That's a that's a yes. Dads play cricket too. All right, mm. lads. Well, we're running out of time, but this is one of my favourite ones we picked up. This is actually Javin Meander in an I Heart New York cap. Now, we tried to find an image for this. We couldn't actually source it, but uh, Pez, you might be in the best position to actually explain what was happening. Well, I mean, this is great mythology because there's mm. not a lot of images exist from kind of um, like Pakistan cricket in the late 80s, but basically, as you can see on screen, there's a story of uh, Tim May playing in his third ever test match for Australia. Mm. Uh, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was an article in the SMH about um, the kind of reverence we have for the baggy green and mm. Tim May re yeah. regales everyone with this story of playing his third test match um, and, be, and facing Javed Mandad, who at the other end was in an I Heart New York cap. Um, Javed Me and Dad went on to score 211 in that yeah. test match, and I think Tim May. 2988, according to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We did it in the future, but uh, um, Tim May said, so this, so this is test cricket, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't matter what headwear you got. I mean, I can't see it. If you guys aren't anything other than that's hot, oh, yeah. uh, then I'm out. I'm, yeah. I'll walk How can set. you go to New York and not come home with an <laughs> yeah. New York hat anyway? Let alone wearing a test match. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, best I'm, I could not be happy That's the with best that. item of cricket best fashion, I think, almost ever. Right. Okay. Like WG Gross. So that is yeah. unanimously hot. Yes. Really hot. So we're moving into uh, a different section, yeah. keeper wear, we're yeah. calling this uh, genre of clothes. Yeah. This is the most controversial section, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and we've had a lot of inquiries about this. So specifically yeah. the short sleeves yeah. that are modern, but also some past keepers choose yeah. to don. There's a lot of examples here. Well, roll through. Yeah, there's roll the head of the ICC, Dave Richardson yeah. there with mm -hmm. Adam Perore as yeah. well. Uh, Richardson celebrating... Uh, you know, yeah, oh, this uh, is really disappointing again. To say. There's a lot going on yeah. there because uh, he's actually uh, Tim Payne there is wearing Cam Bancroft's shirt as yeah. well. So there's a he's lot going on. He's trying to pop a there. bicep out there underneath. Yeah, there's <laughs> something going on there. But that yeah. was Tim not wearing his own shirt. Uh, this is uh, this is recently as well. Yeah, this is a, this is a poor um, unnamed Victorian <laughs> underage representative, not only wearing short mm. sleeve Little shirt as a keeper, hat. but a camping hat mm. as well. And so and gardeners it, gloves and gardeners gloves. And looks like, like there's a trend going on here with wicket keepers who are kind of trolling a little bit. Yes. Um, yes. And well, yeah, well, this is, yeah, we will, we will get to this. I mean, let's talk about those short sleeves that we saw before. Mm. Okay. So, okay. Hot so or short not. sleeves, hot or not? I mean, yeah. he goes as a former keeper, let's throw mm. to you first. Hot, not? No, it's shocking. No, you yeah. can't stand. It's one of the worst things you'll see in a cricket field. Definitely not hot. Okay. Mm. I also agree that it just isn't hot. It's unanimous. Keepers in short sleeves are not hot. Mm. But on the other hand, let's talk about the last one, uh, hot or not, for TJC. Who's been Force. flying the flag, I have mm. to say. Seb yeah. Gotch mm. from the Melbourne Stars was walking around the other day. So he's going through in short sleeves. He's getting a lot of um, mm. uh, grief from mm. it, about it, you know, from commentators. And now he's right. walking around Melbourne yes. in his full Melbourne yes. Stars yes. kit. Yes, yeah. yeah. so that, that's, uh, that's come from Jackson Bird's yeah. uh, Instagram story, which I picked up. And, uh, a little screenshot that's <laughs> Seb Gotch walking around Melbourne yeah. in his actual playing shirt. Yeah. Phenomenal trolling yeah. from Seb, yeah. uh, who we did invite on, but uh, yeah, he's still he's didn't get back to us. Still thinking time. about it. Still thinking great. about it. Mm. Offer's still there, Seb. But uh, come on and tell mm. your side of the story. Explain why you're doing these rare things. Mm. Well, I mean, okay, the floor, look, is, the floor is yours. A couple, a couple of mm. years ago, David Warner posed in full one-day kit at Coogee Oval, yes. and that looked very strange. Mm. I thought for it looked some, really natural. I, I quite like this with Seb Gotch. Like yeah. If I played for the Melbourne Stars and I had the opportunity to just put on my kit and walk mm. around, I'd probably mm. do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still wearing my under-12 Gordon rep shirt just yeah. to social functions now, yeah. and I'm yeah. 33. Mm. So mm. I like the trolling aspect of it, lads, and I think this is actually hot. I like him walking around in, uh, in, in okay. his own playing shirt. I'm going to go because he's trolling hot. Okay. Come on the show, Seb. Okay. Stop well, thinking about it and come on. All right. Mm. It's hot. Mm. 
Um, Dave, I think you're going to wrap up the show. We better do these ones quickly. We're running yep. out of time here. Yeah, okay. So this is the Ask TGC section. So you can, as always, uh, contact us, um, pour your heart out to us via a number of uh, different social platforms, including mm. Twitter with the hashtag mm. AskTGC. Uh, this first one comes via Instagram. Uh, Dave Campbell writes, Hi, AskTGC. Can you provide some reasoning behind why all cricketers state that their team really want to win? Mm. Uh, isn't that a given, champ, mm. he says, with mm. the hashtag AskTGC. Mm. So do all cricketers really want to win? I think when you get in the huddle, you have to say certain things, the huddle being mm. when you take a wicket. Uh, you know, usually that we were talking about before with David Willey. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you have to go in there with, with some key phrases. You've got to work hard. Mm. You know, one get will bring two. Out. We've got to get these blokes out. You know, pick up the fielding, throws up, energy, get through the overs, that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, none of this mm. means anything. No. Uh, and no You're almost will... reciting it like a robot, like it's, you're an automaton. <laughs> yeah. It's out generic great cricket yeah. phrases. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what his question is, but yeah, everyone really wants to win. But what, mm. obviously what, what we all really want is to go home. Mm. And we're nearly, we're nearly there. Luke mm. Brockman writes in and says, uh, his handle is at keg on legs. Oh, yeah. uh, he <laughs> says, is the introduction of retro kit from CA the diversion equivalent of the Titanic's crew dressing up as pirates to distract passengers mm. as the vessel slowly sank into the North Atlantic Ocean? Couldn't have put it better myself, Luke. The answer is yes. Yeah, that's exactly what yeah, it is. Great diversionary tactic. Mm. Um, last one today, lads. Matt Trodden uh, with the handle Trods2906. He mm. asks, I previously dismissed Elise Perry in a Causey Shield game. Uh, that's an under-12 New South Wales rep uh, competition. Uh, right. Uh, got Russell Arnold out in the nets once at training mm. and was bowling when Nick Madison was run out against us in Green Shield. That's mm. an under-16 mm. New South Wales rep competition. Mm. Uh, very Sid-centric. Mm. Is it fair to round up and claim I have one test wicket? Uh, Let's break down his reasoning, is it? No. Does that make any sense? No, it's not fair. It doesn't work out mathematically or figuratively or otherwise. Though, Matt, you have mm. done the ultimate grade cricketer mm. kind of um, ploy by ensuring that while you've been self-deprecating that you still manage to mention mm. multiple international mm. players mm. Uh, in the same sentence and associate yourself with them. So well done. Yeah. I like the fact that he was bowling when someone was run out. Does that count? No. Mm. No, that's the, literally part of the laws of the game that does mm. not count. All right, lads. Thank you so much for joining me. No worries. Every this week. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> on show. I'm contracted to do so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Ian Higgins, Sam Perry, Dave Edwards signing off for the Great Cricketer. We will see you on the internet.